so yesterday uh, what we did was we looked at some of the core competencies or skills that are required in order to successfully execute your roles and responsibilities as business analyst okay so these are some of the skills that we looked or uh, or, or discussed now along with it what i also mentioned was have one common attitude that is have an open mind so this open mind helps you receive feedback and take action on feedback okay. now we also learned that business analyst is an individual role okay. it's an individual contribution role so wherein you you work independently but then you work in the environment of a team so we looked at how some of these skills like leadership problem solving decision making will help you help you take right action in the take right action in your day to day responsibilities okay, then we also looked at one common way of making your meetings or emails much more effective now i also told you that today we'll uh, we'll go through one assignment so towards the end of the class i'll share the link of a youtube video uh, that will be your first assignment uh, with respect to the class so that you you get into the habit of habit of making notes now one request now as and when these uh, as and when these recordings get available to you what i request you is go through these recordings get into the habit of making notes by listening to the recordings okay, irrespective of uh, what notes i share you the notes that you are going to prepare will help serve two purposes one it will help you revise what we have studied in the class okay and second these notes will help as pointers that when you are preparing for interviews or when you when you want to look at a particular topic your own notes will help you recollect or remember things quickly okay and these notes certainly help you when when you are preparing yourself for the business analyst role as well okay so as and when these recordings are available go through those recordings prepare your own notes ensure that uh, you keep referring to the notes because it may be difficult to refer to recordings every time these may be one hour long recording and you may not know where exactly in the recording to look for a topic okay so notes in that case helps us helps into quickly referring to a particular topic now before we move forward uh, is is anyone having any question with respect to what we discussed yesterday uh, skills required as business analyst okay i'll take the silence as no no question so let's uh, start today with some of the commonly used terms in the it industry and that you will encounter as business analyst okay so before we uh, get into details of what business analyst does what are some of the techniques we used in requirement gathering sorting prioritization requirement modeling it is important to understand some of the common basic terms so that as we go through the course and when we use these terms it makes much more sense okay also not everyone from the uh, from the students will be from the uh, it industry okay people could be from non it background as well so it will help them understand what these terms mean
okay so let's get started let me start the first one first term that that we'll look at is statement of work what is statement of work statement of work is often uh, abbreviated as sow okay sow or statement of work and this is generally an agreement between the customer the client that is giving us the work and the it organization okay so that defines the rules of how we are going to do the work and what type of work needs to be performed okay so before two people that is the client and the it organization before they start working together they sign an agreement or a contract okay so that tells or provide few details like what will be the length of contract okay then what type of work needs to be performed okay. what will be the limitations or boundaries of the contract and such type of things so that uh, so that that will uh, serve as the rule book okay for for both parties for the client and for the it organization as well okay now second thing is scope you you will often hear the term scope that as business analyst we define the scope first and then start working on the requirement so what is scope scope is nothing but creating boundaries for our product okay so before we get started with any work what we need to clearly articulate or define is what is going to be our starting point and what is going to be our end point okay so scope helps us sorry scope is defining the boundaries boundaries as in like it is defining what will be our starting point and ending point okay so 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 say when we are using google maps okay or or any other maps for that example so what we do is we have a starting point from where we are going to start and then we have an end location where we want to reach okay so those two define our boundaries that that is how we are going to start and end now why it is important why it is necessary to have scope is if we don't have scope if we don't have boundaries then we may get into an endless loop okay you may never know where to start where to end for you it it may become like everything is important whatever client says whatever requirement client wants everything is important and everything needs to be worked on but remember in in uh, in software development you cannot create a working software you cannot create or build a working software without knowing the scope okay so if you guys are familiar with cricket uh, we have boundary ropes okay so if the ball crosses the boundary ropes you get either four runs or six runs just imagine if there is no boundary rope in the game of cricket then how are you going to get four or six runs maybe you will never get four or six you will just hit the ball and then keep running so that that gets into that gets you into an endless loop that you just hit the ball keep running there is no four no six so similarly in the world of it industry as well if we don't get to define our scope okay that is defining the boundaries for our working software we may get into an endless loop 
and if if we get into an endless loop you may never be able to create or build a working software okay now sure so let's move on to the next one that is change request or change requirement which is often abbreviated as cr now this is one of the most common terms that you'll keep hearing uh, hearing from different people that hey i am working on this cr did you create the cr where did you create the cr can you give me the cr number okay so what happens is a change request or a change requirement as it is suggested is is a change or a modification in the requirement okay now what that means is whenever customer comes to us whenever the client or the customer who is giving us the work okay on on what type of software needs to be built so whenever they tell us that the existing software needs to be modified okay so now customer can do two things one the existing software needs to be modified or they don't have a software and they want to build a new one okay or they want to build a new software okay so what could be an example of modification suppose earlier we were not having upi payments now let's say uh, we uh, we added upi payments so now they want to modify their Uh, e-commerce application and say that let's include upi payment method also in our payment page so that users can select that method and make payments appropriately now this will this could be termed as existing require uh, existing software being modified now a building a new software means they don't have a e-commerce application and then they now want to build it now whenever customer says that they are looking for some requirement we usually need to track that okay so we want to we want to track that so usually what we tell them is you create a change request okay a cr so that we know that this particular change is actually coming from the client that we are not making any changes by ourselves so a cr is is usually to track the client requests that what all request client is submitting and basis those uh, requests that client is submitting we start our work now next is one of the activities where we will be spending lot of time during our business analyst work okay that is elicitation elicitation basically could be any technique method or framework that we use as a business analyst basically to extract emotions facts opinion or information from the client okay so what is uh, truly an elicitation is is actually getting the getting the requirements now client usually can come to you with an idea in their head okay say for example i want to build an e-commerce application now knowing the idea alone is not enough for us to build a software okay anyone can come to us with idea anyone can sign a contract sow with us and say that okay i have since we now signed sow so let me create a change request that change request tells me that i want to build an e-commerce application but does that mean i have all the information to get started 
my development team they need much more than that that what is it that they are going to code for either you tell me a simple requirement that look at amazon look at flipkart and copy uh, copy whatever features they have or you tell me exactly what you need so when client gives us the idea what we do is we use b as in ba uses appropriate elicitation techniques to extract more information or opinion or idea or their emotions as well from the client okay in english elicitation means extracting information from the other person so here the other person is nothing but our client okay so what we do is we will look at some of the elicitation techniques like interview okay, brainstorming jad sessions prototyping we'll cover all these techniques in detail in our subsequent classes so, and similarly there are others as well so we use any of the elicitation techniques and then start getting more details for example let us consider interview so in interview what happens is we prepare a list of questions or we instead of preparing a list of question we just prepare one question and then throw that question to the client now basis the response that we receive from the client we then ask them next question then once they provide answer then we ask them next question now similarly this goes into a loop until we get answers to all our questions and we have a we have a much better requirement so for example let's say we ask them who can use the e-commerce application okay suppose client gives us a response that it can be used by regular people okay or seller who want to sell a particular product onto the platform then we ask okay how customer is going to use the application now they can say that customer can search for a product okay once they search for a product then review the details of the product once they reviewed the details they can add items or they can add the product to the cart once they have added product to the cart then they can go for then they can add payment method it should be more of select payment method okay once they have selected payment method make payment now we discussed about the customer how customer is going to use the application then similarly how the seller is going to use the application now if we have any question regarding searching how can customer search for a product okay so this is your interview technique you ask them one question you get a response now based on the response that you receive you ask them the next question you keep on repeating this unless you think that you have all the required information with you that can be converted into a a requirement okay now compare this particular piece of statement that we have over here with respect to how we started okay so in the starting customer just mentioned i want an e-commerce application now think of this one over here now we have better requirements we have slightly more detail now that doesn't mean we have all the details we continue probing the customer until we think that we have gathered all the information okay so that is the end goal customer has all the idea 
either customer tells us that hey i don't i just want to build an e-commerce application but i don't know how to build one then we can use a different uh, elicitation technique so as of now just understand that elicitation means getting more information from the client on how on what type of software they want to build but what type of elicitation technique is there in what scenario which one should be used that we will we will see in our subsequent classes okay next one is business rules what is meant by the business rules so business rules could be your policies procedures frameworks that govern how the business operation should be performed okay now giving you an example of it business rules okay. now let's say you want to uh, you want to add payment methods payment methods to your application okay till now what you are doing is you are working on cash on delivery method but cash on delivery is let's say becoming cumbersome it is difficult to find exact change uh, people are are finding it difficult like people are saying that do you have a qr code why is it cash on delivery i have only 1000 rupees can you give me the exact change now that is leading on to hassles that is leading to extra time being consumed as well so let's say i want to add digital payments to my platform okay now what could be some of the rules for adding digital platform those are defined as business rules so whenever we get requirements knowing what needs to be done for example customer can search for a product or they can make payment they can select payment method and make payment that is that alone is not enough we need to know what are the different rules surrounding that particular activity so that we can add validations accordingly so for example when we say we want to add digital payments to our application okay what could be certain rules like what type of method can be used for example can i use credit card debit card net banking upi okay so i will not say etc okay because as a business analyst we don't want to get into the habit of writing etc etc means again it is open for interpretation remember when we were discussing the skills and competencies of business analyst we mentioned that we at the end of it why we why we want to develop these skill sets because we don't want to write ambiguous requirements what is ambiguous requirement ambiguous requirement is something ambiguous requirements is something that can lead that can lead to multiple interpretation lead to multiple interpretations okay. so for example see this if i just say add digital payment methods to your application i don't give any more detail other than this now my developer can think that credit card is a digital payment that means i will add credit card as payment method i will write code for it and done now tester can think upi is a digital payment method so i will write test cases for testing upi now different people can have different interpretation client can think that net banking is a digital payment method that means these people are going to build an application that will have net banking now three people have three different ideas 
so when you when you write such ambiguous requirements it can lead to creation of a software which may not be in line with client's expectation so that is why we usually as business analyst avoid terms or avoid uh, even regular words which can lead to ambiguity okay we try to write specific requirements okay it doesn't it's not necessary that you will get to the specifics in first attempt itself okay sometimes you keep refining your requirement unless you get to the specific point and that is why we use these elicitation techniques to get to those specifics okay so this will help us avoid ambiguous now either we can say these four and done we will not write etc now again under credit card under credit card there there are different companies that are creating credit cards isn't it so let's say we have visa we have master card we have rupee card so out of these are we going to accept all type of cards or are we going to accept only visa master or rupee card any of the one or two or all three of them okay so now this helps us clearly define the business rules around digital payment that we we, we are going to use credit card within credit card also we are going to use all three methods and then only will proceed with the payment options okay so business rules are defining how the business operation should be performed now i'll stop here uh, and see if there are any questions from you guys are you guys able to follow along any questions no no okay so let's continue our discussion in that case what is environment or region so during our demo class we we briefly touched upon uh, the the environment or region concept that how uh, environment or regions actually distincts or differentiates between the different uh, platforms where teams are going to work okay so we could have development environment we could have qa environment qa stands for quality assurance we can have uat environment where the client is going to check the accuracy of the product how the product is behaving and then we can have pre production and production environment nowadays most of the organizations they prefer having development qa uat and then production they don't want to introduce multiple environments otherwise again it it leads down to delays in developing now what was the need or necessity for these environments okay why why or what purpose do these environments actually serve environments or regions now let's say you have a product okay uh, you have an e-commerce application and this application is currently being used by your customers okay now suppose you got a change now suppose you want to make some change to your application that is uh like we discussed over here you want to add digital payment methods to your application till now you have been using your product uh, till now you have been asking customers to opt for cash on delivery only now you want to add digital payments to your product now what what can happen is if i don't have environments if i don't have distinct regions what will happen is i will directly try and modify this product okay i will try to change the code change the underlying code for this particular product now when i am changing the code understand that developers or programmers who are changing the code they are also human beings okay they can also make mistakes 
they can also write code which can give unexpected results okay for example if, if when you are selecting credit card it is not as allowing you to select credit card as the payment method okay right let's say they write a code that is not working as expected okay so when that happens so when you don't have multiple regions or environments and your developer is directly modifying the product which is used by customers then what happens your customers can see those defects now the customer is not able to use the product appropriately till yesterday at least they were able to use cash on delivery now they see more options but then the credit card option is not working they are not able to select that okay so now what is one thing developers being human can make mistakes okay so the code is not working as expected mistakes means the code is not working as expected now it can also happen that suppose you need two days to write a code for credit card okay suppose today is just day one you are still not done with it but because you are directly modifying the product which customer is using and customer doesn't know that you are only half done and half not done okay so customer is trying to use the credit card option they are able to enter credit card number but then they are not receiving otp that is because you are only half done and half not done so what happens is now they will think that again the product is not working as expected this time you don't have a mistake but you have an incomplete code so you can make mistakes or the code is incomplete now in such case what what happens is you are impacting your customers experience customer is thinking that these people are not able to develop application or product as expected so in order to avoid all this we create a development environment usually your customers will not have access to development environment okay so development environment is used by developers or programmers wherein they make these modifications for example they they complete their coding of adding digital payment methods that to credit card once they are all done once they are confident that my my coding is complete and my code is working as expected then what they do is they ask qa team to utilize qa environment and then test the product okay once developer are done with their code changes and tested it they move the changed slash updated code to qa environment okay in qa environment qa will test the changes whether whatever developer has coded is actually working as expected or not it is again like we said developer can make mistakes so we don't want to simply say that whatever code developer is writing is 100 percent perfect that may not be the case okay so we want to test it so that is why we have certain distinct environments that actually helps you helps you uh, control what would be the impact if we don't have these multiple environments our end customer get impacted directly so what we do is we create these environments we allow people to work on their own environment and then once we are confident that all code is good no mistakes then we move it to production environment where the end customer uses the particular product okay so you test the changes if all goes good if you don't find any the mistakes in the code then what you do is you move the changed slash updated code to uat environment okay so in uat environment what happens is now client does one round of testing okay remember client not the customer client is is the person who is giving us the work so customer is is who is placing the orders on our e-commerce application so in uat environment now client is doing the testing 
client is ensuring that whatever changes you guys have added whether those changes are in line with my expectations or not okay if there is any feedback also client will give us here that okay i i want you guys to work or modify the software accordingly now if that also works as expected if client doesn't have feedback or let's say client gave you the feedback and you guys have implemented that feedback then to production environment and production environment is the environment where the end customers use the product okay so that is the entire concept of environment and regions and that is uh, the reason why we have multiple environments and regions so that the work done by one person doesn't affect or negatively affect mainly the other person next is estimations okay so what happens is we want to measure the work that that we are doing okay we we in order in it industry what typically happens client gives you requirement and now client wants to know how much time you are going to take okay so estimation is a technique of measuring the work measuring the work means how much time is it going to take us to finish the work okay now this estimation can be done in terms of uh, uh hours that we we are going to take 20 hours to do the work 50 hours 100 hours to do the work that is the most generally way of estimating estimating any type of work see even when you use maps when you have to go from one location to another location how do we measure how do we estimate so we usually estimate in terms of hours only that we are going to take one hour to reach the office now let's look at some of the roles that are available in it industry okay how you are going to work with the different set of people okay and uh, then we will we will use this in our it team structure that how a normally team is structured so today's session and then uh, tomorrow and day after tomorrow is is to get you guys uh, get acquainted with with how the it teams are structured what type of terms they use normally so that you don't feel that uh, you come from a different background okay that's why i keep saying get yourself acquainted or used to these terms being used now let's look at change management and defect and then look at all these different set of people that are there okay so what is change management okay simply stating change management is an act of managing how the changes will be delivered okay so again getting back to our change add digital payment method to your application now usually the person responsible for change management is your project manager or scrum master okay and it is not something that usually we track or we measure as business analyst so so they try and identify how the how the change will be tracked like are we are we going on track suppose what is what will be our plan for handling the change like if we say it we are going to take one month to to work on this new requirement okay so then some then the project manager or scrum master will create a plan that in one month what all activities we are going to do okay 
then they will start tracking the progress as per the plan that are we progressing along as per the plan or can we still complete the work in one month or is it going to take us more time are we getting any issues while we are working on it so that is your entire change management process so you track you create a plan and then you track the progress against that plan to ensure that we can still deliver the product on time now at the end we have defect bug or issue you'll often hear the term defect bug that we have encountered a defect or bug that is basically in simple terms deviation from standard or expected output okay suppose <clears throat> So what is defect? We said deviation from the expected output. Let's say that we added a, we added UPI payment method to our application. Okay. We added UPI payment method to our application. Now there are two ways in which we can usually do. We can get a QR code. And then scan the QR code. Okay. Or we can directly call, uh, we can provide our UPI address. Okay. And once we provide the address, the application, uh, our e commerce application sends a payment request to our, to the, to the application that has the, uh, that has the address. Okay. So for example, we can have, we can have the UPI address as ABCD at the rate HDFC bank. Okay. So we enter this UPI address. That is usually called as VPA. Okay. And whichever application whichever upi application where we have this upi id that application gets invoked so now we can make payment accordingly now suppose this is the expectation that suppose if user selects qr code it should generate a qr code which the user can scan now suppose while clicking on qr code you don't see any qr code at all a blank screen comes up now blank screen is not the expected output expected output is i should see a qr code but what i am seeing is is a blank screen okay so so in that case it's a defect bug why it's a defect or bug because it is deviating from the expected output the expected output is the expected output is we should see the qr code similarly Let's say when we enter the uh, enter the UPI address, okay? So it should send a payment request to my corresponding UPI app, but I'm not receiving any request at all, okay? Whereas for other UPI addresses, I am receiving the payment request. So in such cases, wherever you see any deviation from the expected output, that is usually termed as defect or bug okay now defect or bug are very common thing it is certainly difficult or impossible to write a hundred percent defect free code when whenever you deliver applications whenever you create the software you will often find that one or the other person someone would uncover a defect even the applications that are most widely or popularly used uh, even in cases of uh, applications developed by Google or Microsoft also, they are not 100% defect free. Okay? We continue to, to make some changes or modifications because of two reasons. One, either you, have un, uh, either you have encountered a defect or you have come up with new changes. Now just to give you guys a background, usually when a, whenever a defect is encountered, okay so the it organization takes care of it okay 
when i say takes care of it that means it organization will will not charge the customer they will say that because we have written the code incorrectly so we will fix it for you and we will fix it for free we are not going to charge anything but when change request is being created change request is being created that means customer wants to make some changes to the software and it organizations will charge the client okay. so change request is is how they measure their revenue or the how they make their money okay so that is why whenever you see a defect coming in and when you start working in it industry and when you see people saying defect everyone gets little worried that defect in a way will also affect their performance that uh, as a developer if you if you are writing code that is frequently throwing in defects chances are that during the final year, during the appraisal cycle you may not get promotion or you may not get the expected hike now what are some of these uh, terms that that uh, that's there so these are the different set of people who are involved in the development of the software so what is stakeholder okay stakeholders uh, <clears throat> at this point uh, we are referring to business stakeholders alone but during our subsequent classes we will look at how or what different type of people could be so stakeholders are the people who are actually owning the business idea okay who actually wants you to work on implementing their business idea these stakeholders could be your client okay so at this moment we we are restricting our definition to business stakeholders alone business stakeholders are your client client is the one who has the idea that that they want us to implement okay now next is sme sme is the subject matter expert now smes are the person who have gained expertise on a particular subject through their work okay for example let's say customer enrollment now if you go to bank earlier there there used to be a form okay you need to fill the form you need to attach your photograph on it you need to provide a, a xerox or a photocopy of your identity proofs okay maybe your pan card maybe your aadhar card and then submit the form then someone at the bank will review your form once they reviewed and everything is correct then they then they go ahead with 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 opening of the savings account okay now these people who are working on ground person who is reviewing your application sometimes you may know that they are able to quickly identify faults in your pro, uh, application that you did not sign here you did not fill the address why because they have become experts while working through the years they have become experts on the particular subject of application okay form filling so they they have kind of become smes similarly uh, take for example motor insurance whenever you file a claim for motor insurance that my car was hit by a truck or something and it has been damaged i want to repair my car and for repairing i am filing for this claim so usually a surveyor is assigned that surveyor is also an sme okay they they understand how how the car uh, whether the car was uh, hit by a truck or whether it was your mistake and whether the claim should be approved or not okay so smes are the people who over the year have gained expertise on the particular subject remember they may or they may not have the it experience okay but what they surely know is 
how that business particular business functionality works for example form filling that we discussed uh, or the uh, reviewing of the claims then we have technical architects so technical architects are are people within it organization who understands the technology really well who understands what are the latest trends okay what are the new technologies that are coming up and whenever you give them a requirement okay whenever you give a requirement to a technical architect they are the first ones who decide how we should build the application okay they will not write the code to create the application but they will create a solution document that will tell us how to create the application okay then using their solution development we have another set of person development lead within it industry these are the people who are responsible for creating design documents by referring to solution document now development lead is also the person who will be managing developers under him or her okay so they will be assigning the work to developers and now these developers are the people who are actually writing the code okay so developers write the code but for developers to write the code they need design document that how to write the code okay so that design document is given by development lead for development lead to create the design document they need a solution document that solution document is given by technical architect for technical architect to create the solution document they need requirements so those requirements are done by business analyst okay now next one is test lead test lead is someone who is responsible for managing the testers or the qa so qa lead or test lead they are someone who is responsible for managing assigning the work to different qa or testers okay and they are also responsible for now any lead level position whether development lead or test lead these people are not only just responsible for managing and assigning work to to the people under them but they are also responsible for ensuring that people get the required knowledge or the skill set so in a way they are responsible for training their team members training the team members to ensure that they are up to date with the knowledge on how a particular activity needs to be performed now with that we covered <clears throat> covered almost all of the commonly used terms uh, do you guys have any questions any doubts any clarifications that are needed okay so anusha irfan uh, do you guys uh, come from the it background itself uh, yeah so anusha if i remember like you you are uh, currently into qa yes i am currently into qa okay what about you irfan it looks like irfan might not be on the call i see other people as well uh, who else do we have uh, can you please unmute and tell like if you have what's your name and if you have any experience into it yes yes rahul uh, rahul my name is mohammad iqbal rahman hello here yeah yes i'm having 2.5 years of experience in tele performance as a quality analyst and i am also a certified uh, scrum master from csm 
Okay, good, good, Irfan. <coughs> so, that's it from my side, dog. Uh, Rahul, I just want to share with you something. May yeah. I? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Irfan. Uh, so, yesterday I went for an interview. So, unfortunately, I got rejected because of my communication skills. It was completely mm -hmm. a BPO. So, uh, will that same be impacting in business analyst? So, when you said you got rejected because of your communication skills, is it like uh, your English not being up to the mark, or is it that your English is all good, but they were not convinced by the answers you were giving? Yes. <coughs> Well, will that same be happening for all interviews in business analyst? So that can happen in any interview, whether you go for scrum master, whether you go for business analyst. I would say that if you are not able to clearly communicate your ideas, it's not important to have uh, wonderful English or it's not important to have great uh, grasp on English, but what what should happen is one should be able to clearly communicate their ideas if i am telling you something and if you are able to understand it it doesn't matter whether i use fancy words or whether i use simple english you will be able Correct. to you will not have any problems understanding but if i am telling you in a language or if i am trying to confuse you or if I am trying to, instead of simplifying things, if I am trying to complicate things, then my I may be using fancy words, I may be using good English, but because you are not able to understand whatever I am saying, you will say this guy is not up to the mark, let's reject him. Okay. So communication to me is, is not very much on to what type of vocabulary do you use, but how are you able to convince the other person that you know the topic? Suppose if someone asks you, what is change management? Now, instead of defining what is change management, you are going round and round around change management is an act of changing the management. Or if you are giving wrong definitions, people may think that you are, you are not the right person. But uh, Irfan, during the part of our course, uh, the business analyst course, we have uh, mock interviews also planned at the end like where i'll usually show you guys the normal questions that can be asked i'll first request you guys to respond to those questions and then basis your response if there is anything that needs to be modified i'll i'll let you guys know but what is really important is to be able to understand the topic once you understand the topic you can communicate the idea sometimes what happens is we try to mug up the information mug up means we don't try to understand what is being said we just simply say in ppt or slide one line is written i will mug up that line and whoever asks me any question i will just give that line only i will not say anything more than that whereas if you do this type of thing then it may get difficult and that is what is the intention of training programs that you understand those terms so that you are able to give your own response. <coughs> yes, sir. Okay, now if you feel that your English is not up to the mark, now I don't feel so. Uh, at least I am able to hear you and, and I think that you are able to ask your questions. That's good. So, but in case if you feel that your English is not up to the mark and that is causing problems, then I would recommend you guys, you to watch certain long videos in English, okay? Not the movies. People often say that watch movies, but I feel that some, sometimes in movies, they, they don't use the appropriate English language, which can impact you again if you, if you learn it the wrong way. So certain news channels, if you are interested in, in the latest happenings, so you can watch certain news channels, but in English. So that way you, you 
further it will help you understand whether you are able to receive inputs on what other person is saying similarly if you are already working in an organization and instead of practicing uh, like instead of talking in either uh, regional language or a non english language in your office talk specifically in english with your colleagues also even though your colleagues may know the regional language but it is always good to talk to them in english so that will give you lot of confidence plus if there are any mistakes you are making your team can correct you yes yes <coughs> I mean, if you feel, I mean, I don't feel it that way that your language is not up to the mark. What I feel more is usually in people reject someone in interview because they feel that you don't have the appropriate technical knowledge. And we'll cover that during our mock interviews. That when you go for interviews, most of the time when you are telling what BA does, you already know what a BA does. Okay, but yes. still when you give answers people will say that hey, this guy is not ba why because instead of explaining i'll just give you an example that how do you gather requirements suppose you you tell that i go to client i talk to client and gather requirements now this is not a wrong answer this is a correct one but now compare this answer that i go to client or i meet with client and get requirements from the client okay now compare this answer with with the next answer that i am going to give you okay so how do you gather requirements now basis the scenario that we are in we use one of the appropriate elicitation techniques which could be interview brainstorming and then conduct a meeting with the client to get more information now those information can be translated into requirements now in both the statements you are trying to say the same thing but the first statement is a more simple one so what the interviewer thinks that if you are giving such simple remarks that means you know the process but even a developer knows the process that you get requirements from client even a qa person knows the process that you that ba get requirements from the client and even you are also saying the saying the same thing so how do i know whether you are a developer qa or a ba so unless you use or give answers in those specific technical terms or using those terms again that we use one of the elicitation techniques basis the scenario we are in to get more information from the client this information can be termed as a requirement now the interviewer will think that now you are using technical terms like elicitation scenario conducting meeting that means you are a business analyst even though you may not be but that gives them an impression so how you respond basically uh, tells them that uh, you know whether whether you are up for the role or not yes yes sir okay so again uh, i would request you guys irfan anusha both of you go through these recordings okay prepare your own notes sometimes it may not be pretty easy to straight away start using these technical terms i would request you guys to to if you are already working in an it industry start using these technical terms with your team members alone if you are going to office well and good you can talk with your friends as well if you are not going to office if you are doing your work remotely then whenever you talk to people over teams try to use these terms so that over time over next one month or five weeks uh, or, or by the time we are done with the course okay you are already you used to these terms okay so that you don't have to prepare or mug up things for interviews if you are already used to these terms by default these terms will come out from you during the interviews also sure rob sure 
okay guys uh, we are 6 minutes beyond the time but still uh, i'd like to hear from you if you have any questions feedback or clarifications no rahul thank you sure so uh, i'll give you guys a link okay as i said i'll give you guys a link on a, a youtube video link on the whatsapp again what we dis- uh, covered yesterday on how to write notes i want you guys to go through that video and then prepare your notes okay so that will help us get started with the basics of ba work to be able to effectively note capture notes okay so watch out for the link in the whatsapp group and we'll review those uh, we'll review the assignment as the first thing tomorrow okay